welcome back to Come Home Cottage. If you're new here, my name is Larissa. Thanks for being here. So my first video for my channel was my Nan's Newfoundland bread recipe. Uh, and that recipe has a lot of dough. <laughs> Mostly everyone who commented about the size of the dough asked for a smaller recipe. Um, so I didn't really have that on hand, but just based on my Nan's uh, larger bread recipe, I just kind of came up with a recipe that can be scaled down to one loaf. So this way, if you want to put your bread dough into your KitchenAid mixer, or if you have another bread mixer that you have, you can do that. I know some people, um, it's difficult to knead uh, the, the bread dough, but this way, with this recipe, you'll be able to make um, a really good loaf of bread. I'm gonna share that with you guys today. So let's start uh, with some ingredients that you'll need for your bread. So I use Fleischmann's traditional active dry yeast. Um, I think you can use instant yeast. Someone from the last video had commented saying that they've used instant yeast with making these kind of bread recipes. So um, I've never done that, but I think you can do that. But this is what works best for me. So for Fleischmann's active dry yeast, you can also buy them in packets. Um, I think they come in packets of three. And so for this recipe, you only need one of those packets, which I think is eight ounces. Um, and if you are sorry, eight grams. And if you are using, if you are using um, the jars like I'm using, it'll be two and a quarter teaspoons of your yeast. For the yeast mixture, you need your active dry yeast, one cup of warmed water, and one and a half teaspoons of sugar. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna get my bowl warmed up because if you're in a cold house or a cold climate like I am, your materials are likely gonna be pretty cold. So I'm gonna fill this up with hot water first and just let this bowl warm up completely before I put my one cup of warmed water in the bowl. Okay, so our bowl is nice and warm. I've got my one cup of warm water that I'm gonna put right into my bowl here. And right away before it can cool down on me, I'm gonna get my two and a half, or sorry, two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast going in this bowl. And then we want one and a half teaspoons of white sugar. And this sugar helps to activate the yeast. I was saying rise in my other video, but people were saying it's called proofing and that's true. <laughs> that's the proper terminology. But I think if you're here long enough, you'll probably realize I don't use the proper term. And thanks to you actually, now I put my yeast in the fridge. I don't keep it in my cupboard anymore. So that was a common uh, response as well, is to keep your yeast in the fridge um, or the freezer, I think some people said, so that it keeps, it keeps better. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cover this with a cloth. It's going to proof. And then I'm just gonna leave it in the oven with the light on so that it can um, keep warm without having the oven on. So while we're waiting for our yeast, we are going to do the next step, which is uh, measure out uh, the rest of our ingredients into a larger bowl.
we want to add half a tablespoon of white sugar. And one teaspoon of salt. If you don't want salt in your bread, you can go ahead and leave the salt out. That's not going to affect um, your bread texture. It'll just affect the flavor. Now we're going to get our one eighth of a cup of melted butter in here. Okay, so we have our 1 8 cup of butter. We're gonna melt that in the microwave for maybe 45, 50 seconds, and we're gonna throw it in our mix here. Okay, so our butter is melted. We're gonna wait for our yeast to proof, and then we're gonna mix it all together. I'll put the recipe down in the description box, so just in case you feel like you missed something, you won't have to go scrolling through the video. I'll just put it down there for you. Okay, let's check on our yeast, see how that's going. Oops. Yeah, that's looking good. That's looking good. So we're gonna throw that in. So they say you just wanna let this double in size to make sure that your yeast is good. Okay, we're gonna pour our yeast and water and sugar mix in there. And we're gonna pour our butter one eighth cup of butter. I'm just gonna mix this all together so that it forms, uh, starts to form a dough ball. I was so intimidated for so long to start making bread. And if you're watching this and you're feeling intimidated to start bread, just start, just try. I think you're gonna be really surprised at how easy it is. It does take a bit to kind of get to know, you know, what it's supposed to feel like, what it's, supposed to I guess act like <laughs> but I mean everything that you try it takes a few times to get things right I'm not usually a person that can try something once and it turns out perfectly I have to practice and it took me a while to practice with my bread but every time I made bread I got some form of bread out of it so whether you have something you can use and it's just better toasted at first or what have you, you can do it. If you watched my first video on bread making and you were thinking that is way too much dough for me to knead, um, hopefully this one will be a little bit more manageable to start off with. Or even if you're not, not starting off with making bread, you just don't want to have to knead all that dough. I completely understand. That's a lot of dough. <laughs> so we're going to get our dough out here.
All right, so we're gonna get that going here. See, this is a really nice amount of dough to start off with. So we are going to need this for about 10 minutes. So I'm gonna keep my eye on the clock. It's 12.35 right now. I'm gonna need this until 12.45 but because it's a smaller amount of dough, I might get away with eight minutes. We'll see. And so one thing you wanna have on hand is to have some flour in a little cup because you might need to add some flour to your dough. So depending on the weather, depending on your environment and the moisture level, humidity, anything like that, that can affect your dough and so sometimes I have to add a little bit of flour. Sometimes I don't have to add any more flour at all. So it really just depends. You'll get to know as you keep making bread and working with dough, you'll get to know how it feels and when it needs flour and when it doesn't. Now the advice that I can give you is when you're first starting out, you are, it, it feels really uncomfortable to have sticky dough on your hands. So you might be standing there kneading your bread thinking, oh, I need a lot more flour on in my dough. So you might just go ahead and add a bunch of flour because you think it needs it. But can I just caution you? Give your bread, give your dough some time and let it, let it get worked in a little bit because often for me is if I resist adding a bunch of flour and I just flour my surface instead, it will work itself out and that stickiness is gonna go back into the dough. It's gonna work it, in, work it in. Those gluten strands are gonna start to form and you're gonna get a nice, you're gonna get a nice dough. But if you add too much flour, you, have the, you run the risk of drying out your bread and we don't want to have dry bread. So one thing that you should invest in and that I really need to invest in is a bench scraper. Someone had commented in my, in my other bread making video because I had asked for some tips from people who often make bread. Um, they had suggested a bench scraper and that is definitely something since day one that I've wanted to get and I don't know why I haven't. I don't know why I haven't just gotten and gone out and, and grabbed one. But it would be so nice. I've definitely taken a knife to my <laughs> to my countertop before, and you probably shouldn't do that. So see this dough is sticky. I'm gonna work that in a little bit, continue to flour my surface. If that doesn't start to correct itself in about a minute here, I'm gonna add some more flour to my, to my bread. But with a dough ball this big, or this small I should say, you might be able to just kind of flour your surface and be able to work that into your dough without having to add a bunch of flour to the dough itself. So just sprinkling some flour on the surface can really help with your dough. And you want to be you want to be pretty aggressive with your dough. Don't be too soft on it. I was really soft on it, I think. I thought I was doing a great job kneading my dough when I first started, but um there you go, I'm adding more because it's a little bit stickier than I'd like. But yeah, so when I first started making bread, I thought I was doing a great job kneading and, but I think I was just not aggressive enough with my kneading. So, Put your, put your back into it. <laughs> or if you have a electric bread mixer, go ahead and use that. That will save you some energy, save you some, some of your time, because while that's working away, you can do something else. 
but that's not something I own. And to be honest, I don't really mind using my hands because you can feel your dough and it's kind of, you start to develop a bit of a personal relationship with your dough. <laughs> oh boy. It starts to talk to you and if you're like me, you'll start to talk back. <laughs> So this is working out really nicely. I don't want to add any more flour because it's not sticking to my hands as much as it was. The more I knead it, the more it's the more it's starting to form into a nice dough. So I don't know if you can see that texture effectively enough there, but it still needs to be kneaded, but I'm not going to add any more flour. See, it's not sticking to the countertop when I am rolling it. It is still sticky a little, a little bit, like to my hand, it's a little bit sticky, but you can see it tears, it pulls off quite easily. So I think this is gonna give us a really nice, fluffy bread, loaf of bread. So I've been kneading now for about seven minutes. I'm gonna keep going for a couple more. So I have maybe one more minute to knead this dough. It's pretty much done. And so this morning it was snowing. We got dumped on. We got dumped on all night long and it's still coming down pretty heavy. And so my husband woke up early and was out shoveling the snow. And we don't have a snowblower and we don't have any machinery to get rid of the snow, but we have a long driveway. So, um, anyway, so my husband was using his shovel and our neighbor came over with his snowblower and started to, started to snow blow our driveway while my husband continued shoveling and that, that was just the sweetest thing. Like, I think that's another thing about the people out here in Newfoundland is they will do, they will do anything for you. So he shoveled, he, he took his snowblower all the way up and down our, our long driveway and went around my car so that my husband could take it to work because it's a four wheel drive. And so this, this bread is going to be for our neighbor who did that for us today. Cause we have a lot of bread. We've got a lot of bread in our freezer. We don't need any more uh, bread for right now. And this way he can have a nice fresh loaf of bread and I have another jar of my partridge berry apple jam that I haven't opened yet. So he's going to get one of those as well because just at, just as a thank you, you know, you got to appreciate you got to appreciate the efforts of people that that go go out of their way without asking or expecting anything in return. So even though he doesn't expect anything in return, we're still going to bless him with some warm bread and Newfoundland partridge berry apple jam. Okay, so that dough is absolutely beautiful. It's so nice and it's going to be really really nice to work with when we get it into our dough pan. So what we're gonna do now is I always take a little bit of olive oil 
on my fingers, just a drop. You don't need a whole lot. And then just kind of coat your dough in the olive oil because I don't want it to dry out. We worked hard kneading that bread, kneading that dough, and we want it to do well. So I'm gonna cover that. This is going to go into the oven to rise. We want it to rise and be doubled. So that's it starting out. We want that to double. And I'm gonna put it in the oven here. The oven is off, but the light is on. So another thing is that when I started to make bread, I always put all of my heaters on and warmed up the house an hour or two before I had to start making bread because I wanted it to rise and to do well. So that is a lot of energy and electricity. And in the middle of winter, that can just be, it can just be a lot to have to do just to make some, just to make some bread. So I'm gonna put that away. So what you can do instead, and what I've been doing for the past maybe six months, is turn the light on in your oven and put your, put your dough, oh, we need to set the timer. I gotta set the timer. So that timer is gonna go for an hour and a half and then we're gonna put it into our pan. So anyway, like I was saying, just put your, put your dough in and your yeast like I did before into your oven with the light on, leave the oven off and let it rise in there. It does incredible in your oven with the light on for some reason. It's just the light creates a little bit of warmth and it protects it from the drafts and the cold of your house and the cold from outside. So try it out if that's something you've never tried before. I'm so glad I did that because now I don't have to overheat my house because I don't like a I don't like the house to be really hot anyways. So I would always open the windows after I finished making bread and it would it's just such, such a waste of energy and electricity and and money basically. So we are going to come back in an hour and a half and put that into a bread pan. So here's our beautiful bread dough. That looks really nice. So I'm gonna bring that out. We're gonna get our pan buttered up here. And I have used cooking spray and olive oil before um, because, you know, butter is quite expensive and you don't wanna have to use it if you don't have to, but I find that the olive oil and the cooking spray kind of made the crust a little bit stiff, a little bit too hard. The butter makes the crust really nice and soft. So we're just gonna do a single loaf style here. So you can just roll it into a bread lump here. And I kind of just like to pinch the bottoms a little bit and kind of work that in. Make sure the ends are tucked in nicely so that you get yourself a nice bread loaf shape. So here we are. So that's ready to be covered. We're gonna cover that. That is gonna rise for another 30 minutes before it goes in the oven. This bread dough was rising for 30 minutes and you see that it's nicely doubled in size, so it's ready to go into the oven. And I already had the oven preheating at 350, so this is gonna go in the oven for 40 minutes. As soon as my bread is ready to come out of the oven, I like to make sure I have some melted butter ready because I like to brush the top of each loaf um, and this really helps to soften the crust on your bread.
Okay, so the bread is cooled off now. So I'm gonna get it into a bread bag. Oh, that is so nice and soft. Yeah, that's good. We've got our bread done and packed away. And now we're gonna, ooh, that's upside down. We're gonna give our neighbor some partridge berry apple jam um, and a loaf of fresh baked bread to say thank you for helping us. That's a piece of pepperoni for a Prince. <laughs> I saved it for him. Uh, anyways, to say thank you so much for helping us uh, snow blow our driveway this morning uh, we've got some pretty nice people around us here in Newfoundland and we're so grateful for people uh, especially when they take time um, and energy to help us out thank you so much for watching and if you haven't already please subscribe if you want to watch some more videos on homemaking homesteading and simple living if you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button. That really helps the channel. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.